The internal structure of an aggregate particle is made up of solid matter and voids that may or may not contain water. The moisture conditions of aggregates are shown here. They are designed as Avendry, zero moisture content, fully absorbent, air dry, dry at the particle surface but containing some interior moisture, less than potential absorption. Saturated surface dry, SSD, neither absorbing water from any from nor contributing water to the concrete mixture, equal to potential absorption. Damp or wet, containing an excess of moisture in the surface or on the surface or free water. The amount of water added to the concrete batch plant must be adjusted for the moisture conditions of the aggregates in order to accurately meet the water requirements of the mixed design. Coarse and fine aggregates will generally have absorption levels, moisture contents at SSD in the range of 0.2% to 0.24% and 0.2% to 2% respectively. Free water contents will usually range from 0.5% to 2% for coarse aggregate and 2% to 6% for fine aggregate. Bulking is the increase in total volume of moist fine aggregate over the same mass in a dry condition. Surface tension in the, moist, in the moisture holds the particles apart, causing an increase in volume. The figure on the left illustrates how the amount of bulking of fine aggregate varies with moisture content and grading. Fine gratings bulk more than coarse gratings for a given amount of moisture. The graphs on the right show similar information in terms of weight of, of a particle for a particle or a particular fine aggregate. Good practice has long favored weighing the aggregate and adjusting for moisture content with proportioning concrete. The frost resistance of an aggregate is re related to its porosity, absorption, permeability, and pore structure. An aggregate particle with high absorption may not ac uh, accommodate the expansion that occurs during the freezing of water if that particle becomes critically saturated. If a single problem particle is near the surface of the concrete, it can cause a pop-out as shown here. Pop-outs generally appear as conical fragments that break out of the concrete surface. The offending aggregate particle is a part of it, of it is usually or a part of it is usually found at the bottom of the resulting void. The critical size at which an aggregate will fail is dependent upon the rate of freezing and the porosity, permeability, and tensile strength of the particle. The cracking of concrete pavements caused by freeze-thaw deterioration of the aggregate is called decracking. Decracks are closely spaced crack formations oriented parallel to the trans transverse and longitudinal joints that later multiply outward from the joints toward the center of the pavement panel, shown on the left. If water accumulates under pavements in the base and sub-base layers, the aggregates may eventually become critically saturated. With continued freezing and thawing cycles, cracking of the concrete starts in the saturated aggregate, shown on the right, at the bottom of the slab and progress upward until it reaches the wearing surface. The performance of aggregates under exposure to freezing and thawing can be evaluated in two ways. One, past performance in the field, and two, laboratory freeze-thaw tests of concrete specimens. The abrasion resistance of an aggregate is often used as a general index of its quality. Abrasion resistance is essentially when the aggregate is to be used in concrete subject, subject to abrasion, as in heavy-duty floors or pavements. The most common test for abrasion resistance is the Los Angeles abrasion test, Rattler method. 
In this test, a specified quantity of aggregate is placed in a steel drum containing steel balls. The drum is rotated and the percentage of material worn away is measured. A comparison of the results of aggregate abrasion tests with the abrasion resistance of concrete made with the same aggregate do not generally show a clear correlation. To provide good skid resistance on pavements, the siliceous, siliceous particle content of the fine aggregate should be at least 25%. For specification purf purposes, the siliceous particle content is considered equal to the insol insoluble residue content after treatment and hydrochloric acid under standardized conditions. The strength of an aggregate is rarely tested and generally does not influence the strength of conventional concrete as much as the strength of the past and the past aggregate bond of the paste and the paste aggregate bond. Aggregate tensile strengths range from 2 MPa to 15 MPa or 300 psi to 2300 psi and compressive strengths from 10,000 psi to 40,000 psi. Different aggregate types have different compressible compressibility mod modules of elasticity and moisture related shrinkage characteristics that influence the same properties in concrete. Quartz and feldspar aggregates along with limestone, dolomite, and granite are considered low shrinkage ag aggregates while aggregates with sandstone, shale, slate, hornblende, and gray wake are all often associated with high shrinkage in concrete. Although acids generally attack the le and leach away the hydrated cement phases of the cement paste, they may not readily attack certain aggregates, such as siliceous aggregates. Calcareous aggregates often react red readily with acids. However, the sacrificial effect of calcareous aggregates may be more beneficial than siliceous aggregates in mild acid exposure or in areas where water is not flowing. With calcareous aggregates, the acid attacks the entire exposed concrete surface uniformly, reducing the rate of attack on the paste and preventing loss of aggregate particles at the surface. Calcareous aggregates also tend to neutralize the acid, especially in stagnant locations. Calcious or siliceous aggregate should be avoided when strong solutions of sodium hydroxide are present, as these solutions attack this upper this type of aggregate. The fire resistance and thermal properties of concrete depend to some extent on the mineral con constituents of the aggregates used. Manufactured and some natural occurring lightweight aggregates are more fire resistant than normal weight aggregates due to their insulating properties and high temperature stability. In general, cor concrete containing a calcareous coarse aggregate performs better under fire exposure than a concrete containing quartz or siliceous aggregates such as granite or quartz quartzite. At about 1060 degrees Fahrenheit, quartz expands 0.85%, causing disruption to the concrete structure. The coefficient of thermal expansion of aggregate ranges from 1 by 10 to the negative 6 per degree Fahrenheit to 9 by 10 degrees minus 6 per degree Fahrenheit.